Peak of the week, everybody. Good Wednesday evening from the News Channel 3 House on a weather center backyard, so to speak. i got to think of a better name for this place. We've got our report of what's going on in the Mid-South Skies tonight where it comes to astronomical purposes. Welcome to Skyblog 3. Sorry about the chorus of uh, barking behind me. Just very excited to see me, I guess, for this evening. Got some decently clear skies across the area tonight. A few clouds here and there across parts of the area, but otherwise looking at a beautiful sunset for this evening and no major problems seen across the Mid-South where it comes to anything involving major weather at this time. We do have some more clouds on their way through in the next couple of days, but not really doing too badly where it comes to anything involving stargazing, at least for the time being anyway. So get the old spotting scope out, uh, the binoculars, anything like that. Get your kids outdoors and just take a look and see what's available in the night sky. It's a good opportunity to do so, just to walk away from the TV and the computer for a little bit and just get an idea as to what's going on out there and get an opportunity to study the constellations Again, that we're looking at a good peak, hopefully, of the Leonid meteor shower, which will be going over the next couple of days. We'll bring you more information about that coming up as well pretty soon. And other details on your complete forecast on our video weather blog, Weather Overtime. What's up in the skies tonight that you can take a look at? Not a lot where it comes to satellites, unfortunately. We're not just not seeing too much of anything out there in the way of satellites to spot. The visibility or magnitude that you see in one of the left-hand columns on the screen, that shows how bright something is going to be. 2.5, 3.0 is about the bare minimum of being able to see anything in the night sky. It's very dim. You have to squint to see it. It's very difficult to take a look at stuff like that. So that right there is about the lower edge of what you can see. A positive 2, a positive 1 is a little bit brighter. 0 is optimum for the most part under good conditions. If you really want to get very bright, a negative number under the magnitude is going to be what you want to see. You want a negative 1, negative 2, negative 3. That's how the scale goes. The farther negative it goes, the brighter it is. A space station flyover, the International Space Station might be a negative 1 or negative 2 in some cases, possibly even like a negative 3 or 4, very much on the bright side. And iridium flares can also be fairly bright out there. But nothing going on tonight. Everything decently dim. But plug in your location at heavens-above.com and see what you can see out there should be able to get, again, at least some stargazing in. And again, Mars and Saturn uh, visible in the southwestern skies. Venus is getting closer to the sun, so as of right now, I doubt you're going to be able to see too much out there. Now, tomorrow, a couple of things happening. The first one is going to be uh, Tiangong-1, the Chinese space station that was uh, junked by the Chinese. It is going to be dropping in orbit and coming down at some point in time in the next several weeks to the next several months. We don't have have a target zone just yet, but it is going to be a possibility, and we'll be keeping our eyes on that. If you want to see that, you can take a look in the night sky just before dawn patrol tomorrow morning, and you'll be able to see, again, the possibility of this going along the northern horizon for a brief period of time. This will be going at about a quarter to six into tomorrow morning, so yes, you're going to have to get up pretty early for this. Now, after that, just closer to six o'clock, and again, this is before sunrise on Thursday morning. The International Space Station will pop up in the northeastern sky, fade into view, go toward the west-southwestern horizon before fading away into around the area opposite from sunrise. So you should be able to get a great viewing of the International Space Station in for tomorrow morning. Again, that's going to be pre-sunrise, so you're going to have to get up very early to see a lot of this type of activity. For iridium flares, none tonight, sorry to say. But there are going to be plenty of them in the course of the next several days. So if you have any plans to go out and to do some stargazing for those iridium flares that we've talked about, uh, should be good viewing into, a again, the course of the next uh, several days. But nothing out there at this time for tonight. And again, Jupiter will be rising early in the morning. So it doesn't really look like too much of anything in the way of obscuring skies for that. So you should be able to see that very well. Questions, concerns, comments, ideas, anything you would like to see on here where it comes to viewing of the stars or satellites or planets or anything else like that that we can bring to you on our video astronomy blog, Skyblog3, please email me at austin.onic at wreg.com and I'll be glad to take it under consideration and bring it along to you where it comes to astronomy news and things like that. We can feature things of that nature and if you have any other suggestions just please be sure to let me know. 
and we'll be glad to pass it along and see what we can do to get you more interested in astronomy, which is a very cool thing to do, uh, especially with your kids, getting them in, in, involved in an early age to be able to say, this is part of science, this is what is really cool about the night sky to where we can study the moving lights out there through devices like this, just a couple of ground pieces of glass put back together and able to magnify the light so we can see what's going on out there. A lot of great activities in the astronomical community over the course of the last several years and more to come and a open house down at Oxford at the University of Mississippi coming up in December if I'm not mistaken I'll have to bring you more about that coming up a little bit later on in the meantime thanks for joining me for this edition of News Channel 3's video astronomy blog Skyblog 3 I'm meteorologist Austin Onik from the home office more details on your complete forecast coming up on News Channel 3 with Tim and Jim tonight and of course I'll have more on your astronomy outlook at wreg.com slash weather and remember whatever you do when it comes to science or astronomy, remember to keep looking up.